what is the maximum voltage that we can feed a 12 volts, a 16 volts and a 20 volts BMS for charging our lithium ion battery pack because not all of us have this high precision type of bench power supply for safe charging of different types of battery packs since improper power supply connections might lead to explosions and safety is always paramount. Plus, under certain conditions, you might have also thought about charging your battery packs directly with the solar panels. So, without any further delay, let's start the testing part. This is a 12 volts 3S BMS. Next is this setup that I've made. You can see 5 lithium ion batteries and 1 voltmeter. One wire of the voltmeter is already connected to this point, and here I'm going to touch this wire. And here, as you can see, it is showing 18 volts. So the batteries are connected in series and I'm going to use only three. Now this is the third battery wire. Uh, the voltage as can be seen is 10.7 volts for the 3S 12 volts format which is going to be compatible for this BMS. And after that I'm going to move on to 4S and 5S. So all the connections for the 12 volts 3S system are complete and these two wires are the final output wires. Here as you can see that the output voltage from this bench power supply is set at 12.6 volts. The current is 1.5 amperes. Here you can see 1.5 amperes. And finally I'm going to connect the power supply wires. The blue one is positive and once I connect black one here the voltage should start increasing but we want higher input voltage to test say 15 volts and now let's connect it and see what happens if everything is perfect then this bms should disconnect the charging cells at around 12.6 volts now you must have noticed that there is a voltage difference here you can see 12.4 volts and here only 12.2 that is because of the voltage drop across the wires the real voltage is 12.2 that is across the batteries we are quite close so the batteries are full now it should get disconnected yeah you see it is trickle charging the voltage is fluctuating 14.5 maximum voltage and the BMS is stopping the voltage from exceeding beyond 12.6 so this is a perfect pass how about we increase the voltage to 20 volts that is the solar panel output voltage this will give us the indication if we can charge our lithium ion batteries with this type of BMS directly on solar panels the current handling capability of this Small BMS is only 10 amperes, but right now we are providing it with only 1.5 amps, so it is way less than its maximum. And yeah, we can see here that it is disconnected, and the voltage here is not going beyond 12.6 volts. Here it is fluctuating, acting like a trickle charge. <laughs> Let's disconnect it. So this tells us that we can charge a 12 volts battery pack directly on a 20 volts output type of solar panel without any dangers of explosion or anything. Now let's increase the amperes to maximum that this power supply can produce. So here we have reached 5 amperes or uh, 20 volts uh, which is 100 watts. That is huge power that I'm going to feed my lithium ion pack with this small BMS. Turning it on and go. And right now this BMS is actually not handling that because here we saw the voltage shoot to as high as 13 point or even 14 volts which was really dangerous. And why is that? Because there is a delay for this BMS in disconnecting the batteries with the power supply. Uh, the time it takes for the BMS to cut off the battery from charging is what is creating the problem here. So less amperes or a bigger battery pack like if uh, instead of single cell I would have used uh, around 5 or 6 cells in parallel then uh, the voltage rise would have been really slow and then this BMS would have handled it accordingly. But this sudden increase is not advised because 5 amperes is way too much for a single cell. 
So this might actually damage your battery pack and PMS as well. So try sticking it to each cell amperes. And I believe two amperes is maximum. Next, I'm going to do the same test on the 16.8 volts, 40 amperes, 4S BMS. And for that, this time I will be using four cells, which will together make up to 14.6 volts, but it's discharged, so it should be 16.8 volts maximum as it was on this BMS. So let's connect the BMS. Finally, it is time to solder the last wire, which is of the voltmeter. And as you can see, the meter is flashing 14.6 volts, which means that it needs charging. And lastly, the overall output wires. Let's start the testing part. The voltage is 20 volts, which is much higher than 16.8 volts for this PMS. Now, let's simply power it up and see if it disconnects automatically. And go it is rising 16.2 here as you can see that right now it is drawing around 35 watts of power for charging these four cells since it's a 4s here we have reached 16.8 this connection should be coming at any moment now it has reached 16.9 and it has still not got disconnected whoa 17 volts what is happening 17.1 uh, this PMS is not working that great. Let's give it some more time and see. I mean, I'm going to let it cross 17 volts. Although this 12 volts PMS was much better. Still no disconnection and the voltage is rising and rising. Oh, has it disconnected? Yeah, the voltage is not going beyond 17 volts. It went to a max of 17.1 volts and then it stopped increasing. I'm going to take it to 24.5 volts. That should be enough. And go. And this time, once again, it should not go beyond 17 volts. And we are reaching 17 volts. 17.1 and as soon as it gets disconnected, the current will reduce below 2 amperes. It should go around 1.5 or something and start fluctuating. See the current has reduced. The voltage is shooting at 20 volts. And here it is disconnecting because the voltage is not going beyond 17 volts. So the BMS is 100% fine. Let's disconnect it. Next is this 5S 100 amperes 21 volts BMS. Let's test it. So here as you can see that I've done all the electrical connections and I've included every single cell this time. And here you can see the maximum voltage is 18.2 volts, including this cell as well. And one more important thing that I have to tell you is that I accidentally damaged this voltmeter of mine. You can see here there was this uh, big fire and the electronics got damaged. And why that happened? This happened because of this big DC motor. It's from an old CNC. You can see here 40 volts and around 60 volts. Now in a DC motor, there are huge copper windings because of which they create an inductive load which causes a reverse current flow during disconnection. And this is exactly what happened that uh, once I connected these wires, one of the wires slipped and reverse current flowed through this voltmeter and it couldn't handle that much high current and so it got damaged and I had to replace it with this new one. So let's move on with the final testing. Now the charging voltage for this BMS should be 21 but here I have set it to 28.5 volts which is much higher and 2 amperes of current turning it on and here we have it 28.5 volts and go. Wow, it is not charging. Why is that? Uh, is it sensing some kind of over voltage? Let's bring it down. Nothing. Why is that? Now, there could be a possibility that this PMS might be thinking that the batteries are fully charged. 
So here I've figured out a way to complete the discharging process. And you see this big LED plate and this LED light. These together are 12 volts and uh, connected to this setup and it is slowly discharging this battery pack. Right now it is 17.5 volts and uh, let's give it some time and let the voltage drop and then we will start it again. So here I've successfully discharged the batteries to 17.1 volts and now I believe that they should start charging. And one more thing, I've reduced uh, the current to 1 amperes and go. Seems like... Uh, there is something not fine with the BMS. So let's finish off the test here. And uh, I will do the 5S testing maybe some other day. See you in the next one. Bye bye.